Okay, so we have another episode lined up here. So this time I'm going to call it Decoding Misunderstandings, Layers of Intentions. And, and what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, I'm just going to look at times where people may have misread your behavior and wrongly assumed your intentions to be the opposite of what they actually were. You know, that's a pretty common thing. I'm going to explore what is usually happening when, when that happens. I can certainly provide examples of situations where people might misread someone else's behavior and assume intentions that are opposite to reality. So obviously one of those might be misinterpreted body language. You know, you go on YouTube and you see all these people who are claiming they're body language experts, you know, they just crawl out of the woodwork and stuff. But, you know, n not everyone really expresses themselves physically in the same way. You know, some people are not very emotive at all. Emotive, I hope I, hope I said that word correctly. Um, but anyway, you know, like, some people don't cry at funerals. Some people have nervous tics that make them look, you know... Uh, maybe guilty or something they might they might sweat um and it, it might look like it's a sign of guilt or something like that when it's just them happening to be sweaty like maybe it's just warm outside or something like that you know people might appear to be anxious and it could just be that they're nervous in social situations etc cetera, etc cetera. so there's a there's a lot to accurately interpret and misinterpret when it comes to body language. Someone might misinterpret a person's body language as standoffish or disinterested when in reality they're just shy or reserved. You know, and uh, it's, 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 I mean, to be blunt, th this is uh, one of the stupid things that people do, you know, like, it's, it's often a dumbass uh, assumption to uh, just think you totally understand somebody's body language or body language in general when, I, as I've said, you know, people react differently. You know, some people, like, I I, I remember uh, at one of my grandmother's funerals, somebody, somebody dared to say or, like, n note that I wasn't sad enough or something like that. I remember that happened. I, I wasn't very happy about that. I'm not going to name names with that one, um, you know, who it was who said that, but, you know, I, it, it was, it was put in the memory bank, you know, I, I remember who said that, and, uh, you know, it, it's not like I ever even confronted them about that, uh, because it was kind of stated behind my back, but I always kept it reserved in the memory bank that this is what this person said about me once it was kind of a backstabbing thing you know trying to suggest that because I wasn't all you know teary-eyed at the at the burial service or something that I you know didn't care for this grandma of mine or something like that you know it it was something that happened that would be an example um another one you know this is a fairly common problem is when sarcastic remarks are taken seriously and this seems to be an especially uh, serious problem nowadays because it seems like fewer people understand sarcasm. And also, you know, like, the world is crazier in some respects. I mean, we've got, you know, neo-Nazi-type beliefs on the rise, so it's harder to be, you know, uh, <laughs> sarcastic you know, like, sarcastically evil or sarcastically devious and, like, uh, in your joking worldview, like, like, pretend to express some sort of evil or devious idea or, you know, like, ironic racism or something like that because there's so much real racism out there that you really can't get away too easily with sarcasm these days. You know, I mean, it's... It's it's just the way it is increasingly. You have to, like, put a lot of the sarcasm aside because just the kind of world we live in. So, you know, of course, 
a person's sarcastic remarks might be misunderstood as genuine opinions, leading others to believe they have a negative attitude when they were actually just being humorous. And, you know, uh, well, here's an interesting little fact. Sarcasm, interestingly enough, derives from Greek words that mean tearing of the flesh. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of an interesting word origin. And, you know, I could I could get into that. I could, like, get into the history of it, but you can just look that up on your own. And, well, here's another uh, example of a situation where you could be misunderstood. You know, your quietness could be misconstrued as arrogance. And this is kind of weird for me because I... I can be quiet, but I can also be arrogant. So some, and, and you know, sometimes it's the opposite way too. Like somebody will assume that because you're quiet, you're a, you're a nice person. I've had that. I've had that assumed about me too. Like it's been, it's been both. Like some people think you're mean if you're if you're quiet. Other people, other people think you're, you know, rude and dismissive of of others. You know, they basically make you like a blank canvas <laughs> they, they they have all kinds of you know uh impressions that could be applied to you if you're quiet and then of course another one is that because you're quiet most of the time they think you're going to be quiet like all of the time you know that's another thing um, sometimes introverted inv individuals may come across as aloof or arrogant because they prefer to listen rather than speak. And, if, you know, like I said, another another uh, mistake people make is that assuming that just because you're quiet, you're shy. I mean, that's, an, that's another weird thing about me is that even though I am often a quiet person, I'm actually not very shy at all. Um, I'm, you know, it, it's it's like one of those other things I've talked about, like, I'm I'm somewhat of a misanthrope, but I'm not totally a misanthrope. You know, I can still have relationships here and there, but, you know, I just kind of prefer not to for the most part. And, you know, others may interpret quietness as a lack of interest or snobbery when it's simply their natural disposition. And, you know... It's it's like it's like if you go to a party where a bunch of people are loud and loud and boisterous and obnoxious and you're not, you know, people will automatically assume that you're just like a misfit or something like that, which is kind of funny because really the only sense you're being a misfit is you're just sitting there, right? You're not necessarily doing anything that strange. You're just sort of in a natural state. And it's sort of like the people who, I mean, this isn't totally related to that, but while we're talking about talking about assumptions or while I'm talking about assumptions, um, because I, I don't drive a car or something like that, people, people will assume that I'm this way or that way. You know what I mean? Like, like some people assume I'm some environmentalist or something, or, or <laughs> some people probably assume I'm a, like a homeless vagrant or a runaway I, I remember uh, way, probably like 20-something years ago, I was visiting my girlfriend um, at the time. And I, I happened to be young. And, you know, I was, I was walking to uh, a gas station not far from her house. And one of the one of the people there working there asked me if I was a uh, runaway. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I had to tell them, no, I'm not, I'm not a runaway. I'm just, you know in the gas station. I must have I must have been dressed a certain way too. They just probably thought I was like some poor uh tramp. Not like a tramp as in, you know, like <laughs> someone with a tramp stamp, but like tramp as in the Charlie Chaplin style tramp. Um I I should have probably had that like sack full of clothing at the end of a stick that you know, the Charlie Chaplin types would have back in the day when they were visually representing hobos and old movies and TV shows and stuff. But, you know, the the, the point is uh, people make all kinds of assumptions, you know, if you're if you're just a little bit different. You know what I mean? It's like it's like if you go to a bar and you don't drink. That's another one. 
some people will will assume that you're uh I don't know, wuss or something like that. Like I, I just don't like the taste of alcohol, you know, I don't like being I I don't like the idea of not being in control of my own behavior. Uh, I don't like the idea of becoming an alcoholic. You know, I've been around alcoholics. They were, let's just say, jerks a lot of the time. And, you know, I, I, I saw, you know, people just acting terribly while drunk. So, you know, I, I don't really understand the the appeal of that, you know. So it, it's it's one of those things, like, is that me being a snob by pointing that out? Or is it just, you know, common sense? You know, it doesn't mean I'm... You know, uh, what's the word for that? Straight edge? You know, a straight edge person? Like like it's a politically motivated thing? Or is it just kind of a, a preference based on, you know, logic and reason? <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. And uh, another thing, well, I'm going to get into this. Helpfulness can sometimes be seen as intrusiveness. So offering help or advice with good intentions might be perceived as interference or micromanagement by someone who values independence or autonomy. And of course, micromanagement can be really annoying. And uh, if you're in a workplace, that can obviously uh, be a source of tension in the workplace. So uh, another one would be that jokes are taken out of context. You know, humorous remarks can be misunderstood, especially in text-based communication where tone and context are often lacking. And that's that's similar to uh, sarcastic remarks, although, you know, this has more to do with the context and the tone. So, you know, a joke that was meant to lighten the mood may be taken seriously or seen as offensive. And then if you tell someone it's just a joke, then it sounds like, you know, it sounds like you're you're being dismissive when you might just be explaining, you know, hey, I, I didn't mean to be harmful. You know, it might just sound like you're uh, being insensitive. And, you know, that then you have to ask, why can't people just take a joke sometimes? But, you know, that then you're then you're sounding like a, a jerk, uh, according to some of these people that you're going to interact with um, <laughs> throughout your life. You know, so, so you, I mean, in this day and age, you do have to be, well, I mean, you, I guess you should always be mindful of how others are going to interpret what you say, but you know, there's a, there's a time and a place and a context for everything. And as they often say, be mindful of your audience, you know, you, you, you can certainly throw caution to the wind, but it's not always the best idea. So, you know, humor can be subjective and influenced by various factors, including cultural background, personal experiences, and individual sensibilities. So, you know, people who will claim they can take a joke, uh, you know, that, that they have a very broad sense of humor and that they, they don't mind uh, offensive humor and, and all that kind of stuff, they might sound all bold and brave, but... I've definitely had some times where uh, I, I I push things to the limit with people like that, and and you know I offended them, um, like like uh, well I'm I'm not going to name names here, but one time uh, s someone who uh, tells offensive jokes regularly, that somebody who I know, who's like regularly you know telling offensive jokes, she got offended because she's she said that. One day she's going to find a, a husband who, who will make her his trophy wife. And I just said, well, it, it would have to be an ugly trophy <laughs> or something like that. And man, did that ever set her off? <laughs> I mean, it was a real jerk thing for me to say, but, you know, that, that's, that's how uh, people can be sometimes. <laughs> and that was back, that was probably like 20 years ago. Well, it was probably not 20 years ago, but 15 years ago or something like that, maybe. Um, but yeah, I've, I've learned that even these people who claim to be hard-edged, if, if, you, if you even do a subtle joke, like, well, not subtle joke, but relatively, like, uh, 
you know, it wasn't a racist joke or particularly offensive, but it, it really set this person off. <laughs> I, I remember that. It, it makes me sound bad to share that anecdote, but it's, it's just me being honest right now, you know? Um, so what's another thing? Oh, you know, a lot of people, they will uh, misconstrue your generosity as manipulation. When someone, is, when someone is overly generous or helpful, others might suspect ulterior motives. Assuming they are trying to manipulate or gain something in return, when in reality they're just naturally altruistic, you know that's that's how some people are. Fortunately, there are some good people out there who are not being nice, uh, you know, for some almost sinister purpose, you know. And of course, directness can sometimes be seen as rudeness. Individuals who are straightforward and direct in their communication style may be perceived as rude or confrontational by those who prefer more direct or diplomatic approaches. So, you know, that's that's a, that's a pretty common thing. I mean, I don't really have anything to add to that. But, you know, uh, another thing is independence can be misinterpreted as detachment. People who value their independence and prefer to handle things on their own might be perceived as distant or uncaring by others who interpret their self-reliance as a lack of need for social connections. So I, I think this one might be sometimes relevant to me. You know, uh, I, I think that's one of the reasons I lack social connections, at least locally, um, be, because uh, I'm seen as a bit of a loner. And, and to be fair, I kind of... I kind of choose to uh, sort of describe myself as a lone wolf, wolf type. I said wolf type with the f <laughs> wolf type. Um, so it's it's a it's a little bit of a trap of my own design. But you know, at the same time, that there is some truth to the uh, saying that more people equals more problems, right? So I, I really try to find a middle ground where. I can still avoid people a lot of the time, yet sometimes, you know, still do social activities. It's it's really tough to find that Goldilocks zone when it comes to that because it's, well, for one thing, it's it's a bit of a strange situation to put yourself in, where you're like, I want to I want to avoid people, but I but sometimes I don't want to. Like, how do you how do you decide when to become the social butterfly? And when you decide to stay as a lone wolf, you know, it's it's almost like you have to be cynically tact, tactical on that. And, you know, who wants to do that? So, so anyway, I'm basically done talking about this. But in all these cases, you know, misinterpretations arise due to differences in communication styles, personality traits, cultural backgrounds or past experiences. So... You know, this is meant to underscore the importance of clear communication and empathy in understanding others' intentions accurately. And also, if if you recall that anecdote I gave about that offensive joke, you know, um, <laughs> I mean, what, what can I say about that? It's uh, It's just one of those things, one of those jerk moments in my life. And I would say that I totally, totally regret saying that, but... Uh, you know, it, it it happened. It happened, and uh, it was a uh, it was funny at the time. It's still a little bit funny now, um, but at the time, man, man, was she ever pissed off at me? So, <laughs> I mean, if you were there, you could tell that she was ooh, she she was not happy. Um, so uh, yeah, that's that's one of the reasons I shared that story because it's. It's something I've remembered over the years. But anyway, uh, have a good day. Hopefully uh, this was entertaining and thought-provoking and all that jazz. All right, bye.